Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Here we have Herda, the mastermind of the Herda space station, who is currently in the appearance of a puppet. We don't know much about the actual character's look and appearance, but hopefully in the full version we'll get to know more about her backstory. But for the time being, let us jump straight into things with her overall kit. So Herda in this game is of the Ice class and she is part of the Path of Erudition. And the Erudition characters, for those who don't know, these are characters that typically specialize in multi-target AoE damage. And so Herda is a really good asset to any team, especially when it comes to dealing with multiple enemies. So basic attack, what are you looking at? Deals ice damage equal to 80% of Herda's attack to a target enemy. And the sub ability here, a Wells Fallen Stone. When using basic attack, if the target enemy's HP is less than or equal to 50% of max HP, deals an additional 20% of attack as ice damage. Not bad for a basic attack. You get, you get 80% plus the additional little buff here. Always nice to have additional damage. Then skill, one time offer, AoE attack deals 82% of Herda's attack as ice damage to all enemies. If a target's HP is 50% or higher, damage dealt to this target is increased by 20%. And substat here as well, efficiency, when using skill, increases its damage boost effect by an additional 25%. So the more you use your skill, the more damage you'll deal, which is always a plus. So make sure to optimize this in battle. And then her ultimate, it's magic. I added some magic. Deals ice damage equal to 160% of Herda's attack to all enemies. So the damage scaling isn't as high as, say, other characters. But over time, with the amount of freeze damage you'll be, you'll be implementing, as well as your follow-up attack, which we'll get into very soon, Herda does surprisingly a lot of damage. So for talent, I'll take a swing. When an ally attack causes an enemy's HP to fall to 50% or lower, Herda will launch a follow-up attack, dealing 37% of Herda's attack as ice damage to all enemies. In the sub-ability, Triumph and Pursuit, every time Herda's talent is triggered, her crit rate is increased by 4. This is a pretty fantastic uh, talent, to be honest with you, as it does help to increase her damage output. So through her skill and her ultimate, if your team is producing damage, then Herda can come in and produce follow-up attacks, which is really, really vital in this game because follow-up attacks do so much damage additionally, which can be of great merit in long engagements. And then, of course, a crit rate boost is always a nice thing, which means you can invest more into a crit damage and then aim for maybe substats and crit rate if need be. Then her technique, it can still be optimized. After using technique, Herda's attack increases by 40% for three turns in the next battle. This is huge for her. This is huge for her character because, again, as we've seen, her damage scaling isn't as high compared to other characters in the game of her four-star element or four-star class. And so making sure to use your technique prior to engagement is always important as then you'll get a nice, huge, chunky boost on your skill and ultimate and then, of course, your talent too. So making sure to use this first before battle is really imperative. And that way you can get the most value out of Herda. And then I'll show you the stats here. 60-60. We have 18% crit rate and then 102.9 here for crit damage. And then everything else here you can kind of follow suit. So now we'll go to the traces. 
So traces, again, as I've always stated in po most videos, these are just where you upgrade your talents a lot to, you know, Genshin Impact. And so you can just go level up your ultimate, your skill, basic attack, talent, and your technique is always free. And then as you see on the left and right and above and bottom portions of the skill tree, you have additional branches, which can then increase your ice damage, for example, defense, more ice damage, ice damage here. And then you have some bonus abilities, which we read earlier with efficiency. And then we also have Puppet here, which is resistance to crowd control debuffs is increased by 15%. This just simply means that any debuffs that are applied to your team, or at least applied to Herda's case, now she has high resistance to them, which is a very good thing. And then we have her bonus ability, which is unlocked at Ascension 5, is ultimate deals 20% more damage to frozen enemies. So this can also be good, and this also suggests that you can team her up with other ice damage dealers like March 7th, for example, or even the likes of Gapard, since they do ice damage. And if they freeze them, you can come in and do 20% more damage with your ultimate. So pretty straightforward, pretty standard for an, uh, an ice element damaged character. And then we'll go into her own light cone. This is a very, very nice little inception here <laughs> and a very, very beautiful piece of artwork. So it's called the Birth of Self or Birth of the Self. And then the light cone ability is called the Maiden in the Painting. I have currently Superimposition level 2, which is like a refinement level 2. And the weapon suggests it increases the damage dealt by the wearer's follow-up attacks by 30%. If the current HP of the target enemy is below 50% of max HP, increases damage dealt by follow-up attacks by extra 30%. So just based off of reading this alone, this is pretty good, and if you're able to get the target enemy below 50%, that additional 30% just adds so much more value, and therefore it places a lot of emphasis on Herda's follow-up attack ability. This is what really makes her kit stand out more than anything. And so while her damage scaling isn't as high as other characters, being able to follow-up attack with this much damage output for her light cone tied in with her trace traces, this is really, really effective and very, very strong for a four star unit. So early game to mid game, she's incredibly strong. And then towards end game, as long as you can build her well. And again, as I said before, combine her with other ice elemental damage dealers. She can then provide more sustainability long term. And here we have her Adelons. I currently have her at E2, but we'll kick things off with E1 called a Wells Fallen Stone. We've read this before, but I'll do it again. When using basic attack, if the target's enemy HP is less than or equal to 50% of max HP, deals an additional 20% of attack as ice damage. So the aim of the, the goal of, of Herda is to make sure you're getting as much damage as possible, and therefore you can maximize your follow-up attacks and of course get the additional buff once the enemy has hit that 50% threshold or less. Next is Triumph and Pursuit. Each time her talent is triggered, her crit rate is increased by 4%. So we read this earlier too. Pretty decent. You know, not amazing by any means, but it's certainly a nice little boost for a crit rate, which is also very important when it comes to damage. But then her E3 and E5, or of course her skill and ultimate upgrades, I would definitely opt for her skill more than anything, but her ultimate just is just as strong. So definitely do both of them. I would say E1 to E4, definitely is very very good and here's where e4 is hit where it hurts the damage dealt when talent is triggered is increased by an additional 10 percent so as we already know her talent is the follow-up attack which she does an insane amount of damage with so having e4 just furthermore increases that damage output by 10 percent and so if you do the math from what we've seen earlier again it pretty much states that her follow-up attacks are really where her creme de la creme is and then E6, no one can betray me. After using her ultimate, attack increases by an additional 40% for one turn. So pair that with her technique where she gets an additional 40% for three turns. Then using your ultimate, increasing your attack by 40% for one turn. That's a nice 80% off the jump right there. If you're able to have your ultimate ready, of course. But nevertheless, that's a huge boost in damage. So having all of her Adelons, I feel is really, really vital for her. Of course, more importantly, I would say that her E1 is pretty good. 
E2 is not bad. E3 to E5, definitely good. But of course, I think her E4 and her E6 are really where you can see a lot of uh, boost in her damage potential over time. So definitely invest in her if you like her. Because again, she can do damage early game, mid game, and to some extent, late game or end game as well. And then we have her relics. So relic wise, I would say it's pretty standard. She's an ice damage dealer. So you want to be investing as much ice damage as possible. And so I've gone with the five piece guard of withering snow, which states that the two piece gives you ice damage increased by 12%. The five piece gives you additional 12, so that's 24% off the bat. And then your four piece gives you attack percent increased by 15% and damage dealt to frozen enemies by 20%. So all, all encompassing. The more attack you implement into her kit, the more damage she'll deal. And if you can focus on freezing enemies, then you're dealing more damage over time as well. So we'll go into nitty gritty. So this of course is your flat HP, flat attack and flat defense. As far as substats are concerned, aim for attack percent, aim for crit rate, crit damage, aim for some speed if necessary. Not These are not the greatest in my opinion. Of course, these substats aren't that, that bad. Uh, but effect resistance is always good. Speed is good. HP, not really that important. Ice damage boost for sure on the necklace is great because you want the additional ice damage to do more damage over time. And then, of course, your article crit damage would be nice. And then you have some crit rate if you have it on your substats. Effect hit rate isn't necessarily that important on her. Just because you're freezing the enemy and freezing is always going to be an integral part of any ice damage dealer in the game. This is more so for the likes of like, let's say burn over time or shock damage over time. So effect hit rate isn't so important on her, but having speed, crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, these are always good substats to have for her to. And so hopefully that has given you somewhat of a closer look at her kit and what she can do for the team. And speaking of teams to close things off, as I mentioned before, you know, having a ice team or having some sort of ice partner would be really really good so let's say for example you can have march 7th with the likes of herda herself so you have two ice damage dealers one's more of a defender so you can swap out between let's say march 7th or even gapard if you don't like march 7th that much just as long as you have two ice damage dealers it can really help to apply that additional freeze as you're then giving herda the chance to do follow-up attacks and do more damage as enemies are frozen now because march 7th does provide that additional aoe compared to gapard who is more or less his ultimate is more or less a buff or a shield buff whereas march 7th's ultimate is actual cryo aoe damage so pairing her with march 7th is actually a little bit better but as far as overall damage i would definitely say that these two aren't necessarily the, the biggest in terms of damage dealing much like Gapard, March 7th is more of a defensive class. So she wants to be placing shields on her teammates. And then in an emergency, she can then utilize her ultimate to free the enemies even further. So it really comes down to you and who you're up against in the, let's say, simulated universe or the Forgotten Hall. So again, make your choice wisely. And for the remaining members of the team, that can all be subjective, all up to you. You can go for someone like Silverwolf or, or even Welt, as they can help to debuff the enemy, slow them. And then, of course, you have a healer if you necessary. So Natasha and Luocha are your two at the moment. So pick and choose wisely pertaining to, again, who you're up against. So hopefully that has given you somewhat of a gist of what Herda has to offer in her kit. She's very fun to use. And as I said, she's really good early game to mid game. So be very mindful of that. But end game, try to be a little bit more cognizant and a little bit more attentive as to how you place her on teams as AOE damage can be a great merit. But of course, with more tankier enemies means that you're going to have to be a little bit more considerate with the longevity of your squad. So hopefully that has given you a nice look at Herda. If you enjoy the content on the channel, and you want to see more Honkai Star Rail content in the future, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And for the additional support out there to become a patron, click on the Patreon link below. And for as low as $1, you can help support the channel to help make more videos of this quality. So until next time, folks, have a good one, and I'll see you on the next video.
Peace.